Hey guys, it is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. I meant to say this is Sarah, but you know, I said it is Sarah, so why not? Um, and today I wanted to go ahead and do another mini book review about a book that I haven't really heard about on booktube, but it's a really good one. And that book is called Bright Lines by Tanwi Nadini Islam. Um, and in this novel, we follow a Bengali family that lives in Brooklyn. Um, and you learn about the family through the different narratives. You follow Anwar's narrative, who is the father of the family. Um, Hashi is the mother, um, but you don't hear as much from her specific narrative. And then Sharu, which is Hashi's and Anwar's biological daughter, you hear from her perspective. And then Ella. L, who is their adoptive daughter but um, biologically their niece um, and at the start of the novel you hear about the events that led to Ella being adopted by her aunt and uncle um, but it's still kind of like um, a murky backdrop like we don't know what exactly happened we just know that there was an event involving um, a war at the time between the Bengali and the Pakistani um, and so the novel's not just about that event it's about family dynamics um, we get to see um, Anwar and Hashi's marriage and you know what happens to marriages sometimes um, you get to see Charu as she is you know coming of age and um, just dealing with like her sexual wants and then also um, of being a daughter of um, how she's somewhat religious so um, the reconciling of wanting to abide by um, what her mother would like and then what she would like um, and then there's LGBTQI a themes in it as well um, which are done in a very um, I really appreciated the manner they the novel handles those um, events or not events but just like identity um, discoveries and for an, a novel that has so many narratives um, it does a really good job about not um, not a facing any one like experience like it all comes together very well and the um the narrative doesn't get lost because sometimes i feel like when authors try to do a lot the narrative can kind of run away from them um i've recently finished reading commonwealth the audiobook by ann pratchett and there at times like i would get confused because the narratives would just get lost within one another but here i don't feel like that is the case i feel like here we still very much understand what each character is going through. I mean, it's not multi-generational as much as Commonwealth. I don't know why I'm comparing the two, but it's just coming to mind because I enjoyed this one a little bit more. Um, so, yeah. I feel like there's more that I wanted to say about this, but it's kind of escaping me somewhat. Um, but it was just a really good family story. Um, and they incorporate um, like the areas of Brooklyn pretty well in here. Like they mention different places, and I quite like that having visited the area, so I could really visualize it. Um, it gave a good feel for an area, I suppose. Um, yeah. So I don't know if this is going to really. Uh, I hope this draws you to read it more, because um, I know my summary wasn't very ideal um oh another thing that i should mention about this is um ella one of the main characters she has these like hallucinations um of images images that she can't explain and um you know she doesn't usually tell anyone in her family about them because she's had them since she was a child and um the novel does a good job about tying that in as well and then just tying in like 
different not aspects of lore but like like a cultural reasoning not like reasoning behind it but like it ties well into like the what you learn as the novel progresses anyway um i'm going to go ahead and read to you an extract that i um grabbed from the book i'm not opening the book because i took a photo of the um extract because i am this is out of focus I am really behind on returning said book to the library. And yes, if you saw my room for five seconds, it is messy. Why aren't you focusing on my face? There we are. Not that you need to focus on my face, because who would want to do that? <laughs> anyway, here we are. So. Happy to meet Charu, one woman, Kalimaya, invited her to her family's hut for tea and biscuits. Kalimaya's hut was composed of woven dried bamboo lattice, dyed indigo blue. She and Charu smoked cigarettes as the woman recounted her childhood. Her first home had been destroyed by the creation of Kapati Lake in Rangamati. When they built the dam on the Karnapuli River, they flooded our homes. All of our animals drowned. There used to be tigers there. Now there are only people, no animals. Actually, there are only crows, because crows will eat anything, said Kalimaya, lighting another cigarette. Where'd you get that? Jaru asked, pointing to a world map on the walls of the hut. In the book market. I love it. Me too, Didi. Everything is vast, even, we've ha even if we have no evidence it exists. So that is another one, another quote that I quite liked. And the last quote that I wanted to share with you. In Meghalaya, the same river was called Dakwi, named for the Indian border across Tambu. Nayana and her brother and sister, Makul and Patul, worked from morning t until sunset, crushing stones. Not exactly glamorous. But for us city guys, this valley between two not yet formed states was beautiful. It always felt like sunshine there, because of the amber-colored rocks in the water. We would watch the women all day. It sounds creepy, I know. But their silhouettes against the mountains of collective boulders felt unearthly. These river rock women would find nooks along the river to bathe or wash clothes. It amazed me how strong their bodies were, how they spent their entire lives bathing with their clothes on, because they've never had, and would never have, the privacy to be naked. We helped Nayana wheelbarrow those massive stones. We liked doing it. It showed us a different way of life, and that was interesting enough. So that is that. Anyway, I hope that you guys will consider reading Bright Lines by Tanwi Nadali, right? Nadini, sorry. Nadini Islam, um, because it is a very good novel, and I hope to read more from her. I think this was a debut novel, so um, I don't think she's released anything since, but I shall take a look. Um, and then I haven't watched this yet, but I was looking um, online just to have more that she might have um, like interviews done, um, if she had might have done interviews and such. And I saw a interview that the Brooklyn Museum had done um, with her and um, Daniel Jose Older, who wrote Shadow Shifter. I've, I read it was a good novel. I don't. Um, shadow painter shadow something um anyway and it's a conversation between them about uh, writing beyond just like diversity and writing like fully fleshed out characters who um you know are obviously um diverse because both of those authors write um you know people of color um and people with different experiences. Uh, Tanwi was really good at representing the LGBTQIQA community. Um, but 
you know, writing fully fleshed out characters with lived experiences that feel real, rather than just writing characters of persons. Um, and so I'm hoping to listen to that interview um, sometime this week, because I think it'll be worthwhile. And I'll link it in case you guys are interesting. interested. Interesting. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> I hope that you guys are well. I hope to talk to you soon. Um, and let me know if you've read this in the comments or if you're intrigued by it. And yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye.